I'm Robert Scoble and you're in my house because we're going to talk today about learning. And this is the old way to learn, but uh, Creative Lab has a new way to learn and we're going to hear about all of their expansion plans and what they're doing to help us learn better. Who are you? I'm Chase Jarvis. I am a photographer and an artist and I'm the, the co-founder, chairman, and chief creative officer at Creative Live. Yeah. And who are you? I'm Mika Salmi. I'm the CEO of Creative Live. I'm a longtime entrepreneur uh, and also been in the music business, film business, TV business, all kinds of entertainment businesses. What is Creative Live and what are we doing here? So Creative Live is it's an e-learning platform and the cool thing about it is it's live and social classes. The classes are live and they're free when they're live. Um, and when they're uh, on, you can talk to the teacher and talk to your fellow uh, um, classmates. And so it has this incredibly dynamic feel. And the classes are quite long. They're not just an hour long class. They're a few days long and they're really in depth. And they teach real skills to people. So it's all about learning skills to better your life. And so our, our audience tends to be either professionals or prosum prosumers who want to basically uh, advance their careers or hobbies uh, or they're entrepreneurs who want to uh, grow their business. So when you say day long, does that mean I sit in front of my computer for eight hours, or is it like once, one it's, one hour a week for eight hours? Like no, it's hour? it's all day long. It's about six to eight hours a day with a little break for lunch in there. Yeah. And what happens is that because the information is so in depth and it's so long, people can't possibly grok the whole thing. So they end up having to go to the bathroom, get their kids from school, they got to work. And so they say, that was fantastic. I got some great information. That two hours I watched, I want to get the rest of it. So then they buy it. So the idea is free when it's live, but if you want to own a copy of it, you got to buy it. Uh, that's our business model, basically. It's you a guys, freemium model with a little twist to yeah, it. And if anybody in the world wants to watch, like if you are willing to put the time in to sit there and watch it, and I tell you, we have lots, you know, tens of thousands of people for every class that do that, the education is free. And we've educated, um, again, this is not, this is, we're not launching this. This has been going for two years, but uh, we're starting to make some special announcements and share what we've been doing with the world. We've educated um, more than a million people in more than 215 countries worldwide already. So, That's cool. and yeah, for free. And you know, a certain cross section of the people they want to buy and uh, download to have it and save it and watch it whenever they want. Um, it's not an obligation by any stretch, but that's those folks off the people who do buy offset it for for the rest of we the world. Like, basically, you know, kids in Malaysia watching for free in the middle of the night because it's live. So the time zone difference. They'll be watching in the middle of the night, but they're getting free education from us, and we love that. And and the key is that these people are world class. I mean, yeah. they're Pulitzer Prize. They're not, they're not guys like me, you know, teaching you how to use an Nikon camera. Well, we'd put you through a rigorous training before we decided <laughs> to let you on the platform. No, no, no. no but I mean, imagine, um, and we have a, a special guest not too long after uh, yeah. Mika and I intro the show here. That, um, but imagine um, Pulitzer Prize winners, Emmy nominees. Um, Number one, New York Times bestsellers, Amazon bestsellers. The people that that the folks out there in the in the world and the internet want to learn from. These are the best folks. We feel like the top, the top of the top, to teach any given subject. And we focus on photography, film. It's called Creative Live. Yeah. Photography, filmmaking, um, business. business. Yeah, there's a lot of folks. Design, design. design. software training. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you teach programming, or uh, tell me a little bit? A little bit like on the web, iOS, some some small, but not. We're not really like. Uh, uh, Code Academy or those things. It's, it's a little bit different than that. I do feel um, like there's there's a, there's a there's a future there for us. But the idea of empowering creative creatives or creative entrepreneurs and giving them the opportunity to learn from the world's best. And it's not just like it's not just a one way thing. Like you're, it's live and it's social. So that like, no one wants to watch the Super Bowl the day after it happened, right? So there's an actual event. And so if I'm going to participate in this thing, I'll watch it. And I can I can ask. The teacher say there's a Pulitzer Prize winner um, on screen. I'm sitting here at, in Half Moon Bay at your house, and I can watch it and ask some questions via Twitter. And there are people at, that are in the, the soundstage at Creative Live filtering those, so you, Robert can ask um, Tim Ferriss say a question if he's yeah. talking, you know, teaching a class in the Four Hour Life. Mr. Four Hours sitting right off yeah. screen right there. Well, we'll have him on in a little, little bit. Cool. But the cool thing uh, is that because people are asking questions and it's dynamic, the class will morph over time. It, they may have a script. They say, okay, I want to talk about this, this, and this. But people are asking questions, so the, the instructor is saying, oh, I should go off in this direction. If they go deeper in a topic because they realize that people in the we have a studio audience too. People in the studio audience or people on the internet are asking a certain kind of questions. So the class has this 
non-canned feel. If you know, if, yeah. you know, if, if we had an awesome audience here right now, maybe we'd be acting a little differently. But yeah. we, we're talking to each other. It's a little bit different feel than if you had a live audience, whether it be internet or in studio. No, it's absolutely true. I, now, I was on your your show, uh, mm -hmm. the Chase Jarvis live show. Mm -hmm. That's not is that part of this, or that's it's because that's only an hour or half. An right, hour and it's show. filmed in the same. It's filmed in a, an adjacent sound stage, in the same building. But you know, that's an hour show featuring some radical cool people that are in the creative pursuits. This is a creative live is basically a long long version of that where there's actually real like real skills taught uh, and and it's like tactical real life learning and and that to me is where the real value comes in. Think, think, of, think of a TED talk but way more in depth. TED talks are 18 minutes. This yeah. is like 18 hours. Where but, I was going with that is yeah. that studio when you're on Chase Jarvis Live or if you ever are lucky enough to be in the, in the live audience, you know, there, mm -hmm. you see that you have boom cams and really high high end production yeah. gear and you have a very high end production value. Yeah, right? that's and, that's a very important part of what it is that you know I I bring 15 years of production to the the platform and um, the it's you know four five six seven camera shoots yes. it looks fantastic it looks HD beautiful. and it's nicely cut and it's amazing and again it's super simple anyone in the world can watch for free if you like what you see you want to watch it later or stream it later or download it put it on your iPod your iPad or whatever you press the buy button no obligation and again to have that educated you know well over a million people since we've just started and really got our our attraction going it's Super cool. We're so what, what's the news that you're bringing me today? Because we, we, you, you've been running for uh, sure. a couple of years now. So <laughs> sure. We, we actually remember we had uh, breakfast at Bucks, and I said, I think I've got something to tell you here in the not-too-distant future. The news is this free education thing is um, we are very passionate about it. And so we recently cro closed um, a round of funding, Series A, with Greylock. Who we have a ton of respect for, and we, we Series A, uh, the company was completely self-funded, yeah. profitable from the beginning. So profitable from day one, and uh, had been bootstrapped, and but we wanted to to take this free education to the next level and scale it, and uh, so we brought in a, a partner in Greylock, and they've been fantastic. And are you talking numbers on air? Or? I don't know, seven and a half million. That's awesome. what we raised. Yeah. What, what and I came along with it. So the the idea was that I met Chase originally, and then. Mm -hmm. uh, we started talking about this a bigger vision for this thing. Let's go for it. Let's bring in some serious investors. And so I, we went and talked to Greylock together. And uh, in part of that whole process, I became CEO. They're, the investors are excited about education for the first time in, in decades. Because it, it's, you know, if you talk to a VC, I don't know, five years ago, they would have said, ah, we're staying away from education. Can't make money there. Nobody buys education. And, and the, the game is done. Now the game is changing. What's driving that game changer? Yeah, I think there's a handful of things. One, I mean, the technology and the production values, as I just mentioned a second ago, that we're able to achieve really, really high production values, at, like, you know, high-end cable production values at a fraction of the cost of what would have been five years ago because the same cameras that are $150,000 five years ago are $5,000 now. Yeah. So the, the cost to produce it has come down, although, and live internet to us is something that's really, really special. Um, but there's there's people wrapping their mind around it, and I think education is shifting for away from this formal sort of bloated uh, formal learning to casual, social, um, even mobile, and that's what we and represent. skills-based learning. People want to learn real skills. Like just having a diploma doesn't really count for anything, but doesn't if, anything. if they have some real skills and they can show that I've learned this or I know this skill, you could be in a job today and you learn some kind of graphic design skill, you can go to your boss, you're a small company, three people say, hey, you know what, I can design an next brochure, I just learned this class on Creative Live. And actually that has some value because now they've expanded their, their career and their skill set. Um, and so the idea of skills-based learning, I think, has massive value going forward here. Particularly because everybody doesn't have a community college that's really good in their neighborhood, right? Yeah. This, this is a worldwide thing. It blows down the limits of cost of education. It blows down the, the, the limits of geographic education, of access. Like, when is this 15-year-old kid um, going to have access to this great learner? When is this, you know, this um, a woman in Canada going to have access, or Yugoslavia, to Tim Ferriss? It's really, really hard to get a hold of Tim Ferriss, even if you're his friend, like I am. I, Let I alone. am. I'm friends, and he, does, he sends me this email that says, uh, sorry, I don't even answer my friend's emails. So I'm like... Whoa. You're going to get a chance to defend yourself in a second. <laughs> but, but, but the point is that, you know, access, we're breaking down that access. We're connecting folks, you know, like, like Tim and other prize winners and whatnot to direct it to individuals via chat. They're sitting there talking with eight HD cameras running. Um, and that's 
I think and for that's the instructor, a new it's thing. an incredible yeah. platform. It's this live platform where they basically run the show and they can go into, into depth into topics they may only be able to like at a keynote, it's like 45 minutes. How much can you really talk about? If you can go into depth, you can bring in guests, you can really, really, if you, if you realize when you have that much time, how much more you cover and how much yeah. more meaning it has. It, it so, took me two years to learn Adobe Illustrator, for instance, I, and I still don't know it. Right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not at the level of people who do really. really right, no, we, we have design. those classes in InDesign and Photoshop and whatnot that you go really deep with people who are the, the best authors of that subject in the world. Yeah. And, and that, the, the, the genesis of that is, is that. And I was a photographer, and or I, I, yeah, I am a photographer, but <laughs> I wanted to be one more than anything. And when I quit, I quit a PhD in philosophy. I quit. Uh, I was going to go to medical school to, to follow my life's passion. There was no opportunity for me to learn. Like I'm not going to go back after you've been in a PhD. You're not going to go back and try and go to school to be a photographer. So I tried to learn on my own through or, yeah, with, with in a collaborative fashion. It was everything was closed. Or if I've, there was, it was Brooks Institute, which cost, I don't know, 40 grand a year. Yeah, 40 grand a year. And so, you know, after beating on all of the doors in the neighborhood of people who I wanted to learn from and none of them gave me the time of day, I took the licks and said if I was ever in a position to change that, I would create an open platform for learning. And that's Creative Life started off in photography and filmmaking and expanded design and now business and productivity. And you can sort of see... You know where it's going, and have you, we get have to you listen. Taught a class on, on creative life. Yet? I haven't yet. I'm 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 just helping connect this the people who want to learn. I bet with there's some demand to take the class from here. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe Tell me about <laughs> octocopters. <laughs> <laughs> right, right now I'm really focused on connecting the people who are out there who are yeah. they spend part of their time sharing a lot of their knowledge, and and they want to do that as a as a core part of their who they are and their brand with a super high demand audience, and this. Audience is like we just ask them like who what what do you want to learn about and then we go out and get the best in the world and fortunately Mika and I have a uh, a pretty good Rolodex we're able to find the folks that actually are a great match for the for the platform yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's not competitive with their their current thing if they're if an author or if they're you know a speaker or whatever they do or they have a job as a marketing director somewhere it's not competitive because it's a live broadcast so they basically it's it's a very different format. And we're happy to them promote their other, their other things they do. And often it, it drives a lot of their other business. They love being on there. They feel like it's, it's, it's their time to do what they want on there. So it's, it's an interesting uh, uh, corollary to their kind of current business or current world they, are, they live in. And, and a, a sub-point is it's, it's social from the ground up. It's not some sort of bastardized thing where they try to strap social onto it. Through social channels, through Twitter, Facebook, and chat, that's the mechanism that you communicate with the teacher and communicate with your students. Yeah. If I'm learning something like Adobe Illustrator, I, can the teacher see what I'm doing and make sure that I'm following along with the class? Because that, that's the hard, one of the hard things to still do in education. It's easy for me to listen to you know, Tim Ferriss teaching me how to, right. how to uh, you know, get buffed. <laughs> right. four hour, I got the four hour work week in here somewhere. <laughs> you know? But it's another thing that made to have that feedback loop where he can judge me and say, oh, We okay, definitely have people send in, like yeah. in photos, and say, like, okay, we're trying this new lighting technique or this new uh, software technique. Send in your photos, and then the, the teacher then will pick some things uh, and show them on the screen saying, Oh, so and so, Robert sent their. Uh, their, uh, you know, their problem to us or their, what they were trying to do and let's check it out, let's help them out do it better. So we do that, there's an interaction back and forth. That's the thing, it's, li it's social from the ground up. Like, so you get to use these tools as the mechanism for communicating, yeah. which that's, I think, where uh, really some, some cool innovation has happened. And, uh, what happens also is sometimes in the, in the um, audience, in the internet audience, there's some local kind of mini experts. So what'll happen is that you'll say, "Hey, I'm having a problem." You're typing in the chat room or into Facebook or something, and then it'll uh, someone will say, "I'll help you out." And so you might send your question to them, not to the teacher. You have these little side conversations going on, so you learn from your fellow students, not I just from. How people the... are, are watching the average course or, or participating? The, this is the part that I think is really exciting. I'm glad you asked the question. I was going to volunteer it, but I think we we, we <laughs> talked about maybe opening opening this box up a little bit. Um, for some of our popular classes, it's it's well north of six figures, and there's some, you know, other folks have been waving their flag about getting large audiences, but we we um, have on many occasions drawn well over a hundred thousand for a, a, a couple day course, and I think last quarter our average attendance was uh, about sixty thousand. 
So this is the, you know, in the 80s uh, and 90s, I used to run conferences for programmers, you know, Visual Basic program. This is really the new conference model. Isn't ah. It? Mm. <laughs> hey, we've, had that, we've talked about this. What are you doing later? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we've, uh, you know, the conference business, is it, is it, what's the purpose of it anymore if you can actually do it this way? Yeah. Or seminars. I mean, people go to seminars. They spend thousands of dollars to go to a seminar. Mm -hmm. Networking. So, networking. Yeah. I, want, I watch actually, uh, you know, here, because mm. I'm here in San Francisco, there's always conferences. And I watch the uh, conference live on Ustream or on mm -hmm. a channel like yours. And uh, I watch it even while I'm driving, listen to it. And I get there just in time for lunch to, for the networking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's and, really and, you know, there, there is a lot. The, the scale, that's one of the problems that I think online learning has had to date. Is that they haven't, prior to what I think we've done with Creative Live, is cracked the nut of how to make it sort of, how to make it social, how to make it... Um, scalable like this has all of the same like let's just edu education traditional education hasn't changed for thousands and thousands of years and there's some good parts about it you have a teacher you have a, a student or and peers and the teacher talks to the students the students talk to the teachers and I would ask Mika a question like what did Robert just say right there and creative live scale mimics and scales all of the best parts of that you know, there's teacher with HD video. I'm asking questions via Twitter and chatting to, well, to him. Since we're talking about teachers, can we uh, have one of the, the, of the guys you're thinking of having on the show, uh, on, on Creative Live, come on and uh, talk with me? I guess so. Sure, maybe. <laughs> now, we've made some arrangements. We've called a friend of ours. I think you know him. His name is Tim Ferriss. And he's a New York Times bestselling author. And mm -hmm. I, Multiple. I think he's on his two, second or third round at number one. One of the things that he talks about uh, is this sort of four-hour life. You know, uh, that to me has a deal to do with productivity and business and organization and work-life balance. And there are a lot of very, very, very tactical things. So Tim's, Tim's ethos translates really, really well onto our platform. And those are the kinds of tactical things that I think people want to know about. Well, let's talk to Tim, and then we'll come back and uh, finish I like Tim. Let's, let's, talk, let's talk to Tim. <laughs> <laughs> So thanks for uh, coming on our show, Tim. Yeah, it's great to be here. I've never yeah. been in this place before. Yeah, it's my bedroom. The new digs. <laughs> this I is like where it. I'm going to be taking your class. That's right. <laughs> I, I, sit in I, will, underwear. I will imagine that <laughs> as I'm teaching. In his underwear, yeah. just sitting there watching. Uh, on my big three monitors, right. I'll have it's a live and going. Yeah. Very um, impressive. So, Tim, I, as an instructor, what are you hoping to be able to do with the world you know, through this kind of platform? Yeah, what really struck me about Creative Live, I've known Chase for a few years, and I have to give a little bit of backstory, just real short. So I was on the same show you were on, and it blew my mind. I expected Chase Jarvis this, Live. Chase Jarvis Live. I expected this you know, little podcasty type of thing, and then I saw the end product, and I was like, my God, that was, looks better than Charlie Rose. It looks better than Larry King. Like The production quality, and like you said, the boom cams and everything just blew me away. And I'd been approached by, and have been approached by a lot of education related companies for teaching. And it's usually like simultaneous Skype or something. And it just, number one, doesn't look very good. I'm not going to be proud of it. Number two, it was either free or paid, but there's nothing that seemed to really work, which is, I think, part of the reason investors haven't been interested. And when I saw what these guys were up to, finally, when Chase, as one of my good buddies, was finally like, you know what, on the down low, I like, opened my for two years. What? <laughs> was I saw super high production value, number one. Number two, the ability to not only present material that I hadn't been able to present before, because I'm not going to take two years to write a book, that's usually how long it takes me, on each of these various topics, but to have something I can be proud of that can generate a lot of revenue with real numbers that they're already generating in terms of viewership. I can talk about four-hour approach to investing, and I can have some of the best of investors in the world, let's say, as a guest, hypothetically, and work with them in an interview format. And with the live side of things, I started thinking to myself, this is really like the next generation of PBS, but with all of this intelligence built in, right? Very similar in a lot of ways. It's all the best pieces that I see. And it just made sense. And I was like, all right, I'm not, it's not tricking people. You're giving them free content, but you're giving them so much good content that if they want to choose to buy, they have the option, and people do. Well, every time I have dinner with you or something, I learn, like, I, my brain comes away, like, uh, <laughs> how, does, how does Tim know this much about, you know, what he's talking about? The miracles you, of caffeine, yeah. You, well, you do a lot of homework, and, and you know your subjects really well. What's your latest book that you're working on? The, the new book is The 4-Hour Chef, which is actually very closely related, because this, the 4-Hour the Chef is 
a, a look at the world of rapid learning. So I went around the world talking to the world's best chefs and the world's fastest learners, chess prodigies, people who compete in memory competitions. Uh, and the story is told through my journey of cooking, right? But it was, as, as, a, as an example, just like you had to learn on your own to cobble together this education of photography. Like yeah. if I want to learn how to cook or I want to learn, you name it. I want to learn parkour. I want to learn who knows. It's really, really difficult. If it doesn't fit into these silos of things that have been taught for decades and decades. And uh, in this particular case, it just the timing was perfect. The ethos resonates with me really, really strongly. I feel like I can be proud of it. And I think part of the reason these, that these various education platforms have not been able to attract the A-grade talent, and I'm not saying that's me, but like people well beyond me, I yeah. think, that who will end up on this platform, is because it, the end product is not something that they can be proud of. They're like, God, you know, my, I spent two years doing this, I'm proud of it. I spent all this time with this like network show that I'm proud of, but like I don't want some crappy, low resolution, grainy thing that isn't synced properly being sold for like, you know, 1995 and screwing up everything else I'm doing. Yeah. And this dodges all of those bullets. And it's the first time I've ever seen it. So what am I gonna learn in front of these three big monitors uh, in my uh, pajamas uh, when I'm watching your, watching your class? Hopefully more than uh, people can learn just glancing quickly at a few books. So I'm gonna take the best pieces of my books. I'm gonna take a new experiments that I've run, things I've learned since publication of those books. It's not easy to just immediately update a lot of these things. There's, much, there's a big process involved. I'm also going to be delving into all these subjects that I fantasized about writing books about that I know I'm never going to do because it's so involved. So I want to have some of the, and this is just a work in progress, but I want to have some of the world's best investors. And I polled my readers about this. Right? I want to have some of the world's best storytellers. And that could, you can imagine yeah, that, that could be one of the world's best filmmakers, one of the best directors. It could be, who knows, right? When I announced that I, that you guys were coming over my house, they, one guy I wrote on Facebook, um, thank Tim because I say I lost 16 pounds awesome. using a four-hour uh, body. So awesome. Is cool. this the kind of thing that yeah. you're going to help us improve ourselves? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all going to – yeah. Every, <laughs> every aspect of what I'm hoping to present will be highly tactical, highly actionable. Even things like try this tonight and I'll see you guys tomorrow. That is also something that you just can't experience with a 60 minute for, a format where you don't have any live interaction, you don't have anything like that. One of the things that blew me away when Chase and I met in Seattle last, we, we did uh, obviously his show, and the, how many at replies did we have? 103,000. 103,000 at replies. It just boggled yeah. my mind. And that really to me, I think, if that's the, if that's the number of active actions, yeah. holy crap, I mean you could have and the, the image I have in my head is like, you could have an audience of a million people, potentially, if, and this scales. Not only that, but you would be giving some people a lot of value for free. You would be getting well compensated for that time that you spend putting all this effort into building something amazing. And uh, when I think of it in my head, I'm thinking of like a 10,000 person or 20,000 person stadium, because yeah. I've been to these events, and I'm just like, I multiply that image out in my head to correlate to like 60,000 yeah. people. How many people on the it's other side just, of those cameras, you know? I, it's, ne it's something I've never seen executed well. Yeah. And they've ex they have an amazing team. Well, we want, we want to, so. we have a really humble approach. We want to continue to drive a ton of value. It's completely free. Like, yeah. We feel like this can solve a lot of the world's education problems. How are you hoping to make money with free? Well, there. I mean, if the folks at home love what they're seeing, or it is a little bit like drinking from a fire hose. Yeah. Um, but you know, guys like Tim are super busy. So when we bring in him or some of the other you know fantastic people that are on our platform, like their time is very limited. So they have to come in and they have to deliver. <clears throat> basically, they have to deliver their program uh, almost straight through. And if you can. If you are really passionate about learning this stuff and all you have is an internet connection, you don't need money, then you get all the exact same value of anyone who pays it. So I'm watching something. it while you're giving the class. Yeah, it's live. Live, yeah. yeah. And yeah. no one wants to watch the Super Bowl the day after it happens. There's a beautiful event that comes together. If you do miss it, however, and you can download or stream by paying for the class at any time, and that's still a really, really valuable, valuable how resource. How much does that cost usually? Um, it's a range. I think um, like average is about 99 bucks. We're talking like sometimes upwards of 20 hours of content from the you know speakers of uh, Tim's quality, but there's a range from a couple hundred down to you know I think 20 bucks. So, 
I'd, I'd probably pay for Tim just because you, you talk so fast and you shove so much information. <laughs> High density. Your, brain, yeah. your, your brain is super dense. Yeah. Right? You're, like, you're like, I don't know, an eight core machine on a single core machine. So it takes a little bit of time for it to absorb over here. <laughs> and so I'd probably buy that so I can watch it over the next couple of weeks and go, oh, I remember you talked about this and I want to go back and watch that segment and, and get refilled. And I think, yeah. I think another part of it is, you know, I want to deliver that high density. You know, like I want it to be something with my books, for instance. I mean, they're intended to be sort of references you go back to again and again and again. Where is this book? There's the beast yeah, over there. Uh, so Careful, don't lift with your legs. Not with yeah, your watch back. your back. <laughs> lift with your legs. <laughs> it is yeah. the thickest book out of yeah. all my books. You yeah. know, Would you like I to hold that I, book, Tim? Yeah. So you there and, you go. Uh, so it's, you and it, Seth Godin, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but and, he wrote three books, so you get yeah. thicker. <laughs> yeah, it's 600 pages. And there, I think there's... I want to deliver as much actionable content as possible. And part of that will be things that are just not easily absorbed immediately, right? So if I have screenshots, if I'm walking people through a flow of analyzing how to determine which of three businesses to choose when you're equally enthusiastic about a few different concepts, it's something they'll want to review a few times. It's just as if you were watching a replay on like how to swing a golf club or anything like that. And the I'll let these guys talk to the business aspects, but it is a, from the standpoint of an instructor, it's a super, super compelling business. Like, it is a real business. And I think, you know, for instance, I'm involved with other startups uh, that I feel really strongly about, like you know, Uber, Evernote, but Evernote's a good example, right? It's like, you, I, you could use the free your entire life. You could use the free version the entire time, but they have that percentage that converts, and it's a massive business. And I think that this has every, every potential to do that. Right. Yeah. Without, without that, a doubt. It's well, just a, you know, like in drafting off of the idea of just providing, I mean, that's really how I you know, came to be in a position that I am as a photographer was giving information away 10 years before it was cool to do it. So I just have, there's this ethos that helped me and my co-founder Craig Swanson get this business off the ground, which is like providing free, giving it away and expecting nothing in return. And like Tim said, the the business model that we had to come up with on the back end, it turns out that there are enough people who, through convenience, are more than happy to pay. Like, you want to go to New York, travel there, stay in a hotel, pay $2,000 to go see someone, or watch them for free. And oh, if it's convenient, you know, you press the buy button for 100 bucks or something like that. That, to me, is super compelling because the folks that are that There's want probably to, a better experience than coming and see, seeing you in yeah. front of 2,000 people at South by Southwest yeah. or something like yeah. that. Yeah, well, I mean, in a lot of ways it is, because you think about it, I'm going to be in question and answer mode for a much longer period of time. And like you said, I mean, South by Southwest, for instance, I mean, I love South by Southwest. It has its own benefits in being in person. But if your goal is to get a question to me, the worst time to do it is after I give a keynote at South by Southwest. <laughs> just it's like, just not going to happen. Whereas here, there's going to be a lot more time uh, we'll have people orchestrating and helping to get the questions that'll help the highest percentage of people. And uh, I'm psyched. I'm super psyched. And honestly, with, with most of the, the proposals I've seen, again, speaking from the standpoint of an instructor, I've just looked at it as some type of burden. I mean, it's like, God, like, it seems like a lot of effort for very little payback. Like, very small audience, little or no revenue potential. I just have to weigh it against all these other opportunities and opportunity costs. And I think that if you want to get, you know, Pulitzer Prize winners, you want to have kind of your pick of the litter, you need the whole package. And this is the first time I've seen it. Give me one little tip that you're going to discuss on the, on the session. One of the aspects I've become really, I have been fascinated with for about a decade is mental performance. And that could range from smart drugs to exercises like dual end back training. It's for training your working memory. So you can basically take say your ability to remember an average of seven digits, which is pretty well established, and move that up to like 12, 14, 15. Through this progressive training. So I can remember my credit card number. You now. can finally remember your credit card, called Amen. dual end back training. Uh, I'll probably talk about things that are slightly more complicated, but really, really cool. So it's like, how do you learn to memorize, let's say, a deck of cards in a minute or less? Randomly shuffle a deck of cards in a minute or less. I've met you, people who can do that. And they use, because uh, I, I took a Dale Carnegie class when yeah. I was in high school, and they taught me layering. Like you would put that card on a picture of a poem, right. yep. and then the next card would be on a picture yep. of a pencil that's on yep. a poem, and it helps you uh, yeah. stack. Yeah, but yeah. Ima you're, using, you're using imagery like that. And the, as an example, that is actually something that I'm borrowing from a guy named Ed Cook. And because that's what I do, right? Like I'm not the expert, I'm the guy who finds the experts and then tries ah. to suss things out. And so Ed Cook, who's gonna be in, in The 4-Hour Chef, who's awesome, he trained, uh, I always get the two brothers mixed up, 
I think it's not Jonathan Safran Foer, but Joshua Foer, his brother, who wrote Moonwalking with Einstein. So he trained this author from ground zero to national memory champion of the United States. Wow. And so that guy, Ed Cook, has become a friend of mine, and I highlight some of his techniques. And when, when, when you learn how to, I could go forever, this is why we need more, more time for me to teach, but <laughs> when you learn how to encode really slippery information, like let's say a deck of cards, well, what practicality does that have? Well, once you learn how to do that, you can apply it to everything else. You can memorize your credit card numbers. Do you, you tell me how to forget things? Uh, you know, I've thought about this. <laughs> you don't need any help. I've with thought that. about this. I'll, I'll tell you where I, uh, yeah. I memorized Steve yeah. Wozniak's home cell phone number 15 years ago, yeah. and I've never needed it since. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's taking up some RAM in my yeah. head, right? I, no. could, I could actually learn to cook if I could so, get that damn number out of yeah. my head. So, so no, that's, some that's, that's something that I will talk about. So, like, selective forgetting is actually really difficult. Mm. And so it's like, how do you take those programs that are running in the background and just you're like, why is my computer running so slow? It's like, cause I have all these programs that are running that I don't need to run. And I think mentally you, you have that RAM tax. Right? So it's like, how do you block those out so that you can single task and focus on one thing? I'll talk about that kind of stuff as well. Very cool. But um, see, the, that's the, the thing that, that as the sort of co-creator of this platform, uh, it, that I want nothing more than my friend who does that stuff. To, like, I'm sitting here going like, that's amazing, and if to to build a platform where he can share those really actionable things, and that's again, that's the difference. It's it's not math. I think the future of of education is lifelong, sort of casual, ongoing learning of skills. Um, and I'd rather learn it from Tim, right. than somebody at a community college that hey, yeah. hasn't written a New York Times bestselling <laughs> book on yeah. the topic and yeah. hasn't had that because. When you do something like that, it causes a whirlwind of information to come back at you, and you get yeah. smarter. Yeah, and exactly. You're bring that to glass. I'm, yeah. I'm really interested in seeing what your follow up to the four hour uh, work week is going to be, and see yeah. if you learned something since then. Right? No, exactly. So, I like there are all these things that I've learned about how things best work or don't work from readers, and I've updated to the best of my ability. And I still think you know the the book itself has a lot of intrinsic value as a sort of a system, but there are all these things that I can convey over video that I would never take the time to write a dedicated blog post about. It's just, I don't have enough uh, sort of excitement about sitting down to spend like five to 10 hours but to explain. There, but to if you knew there was 50,000 right. people who wanted no, to know. No, no, but yeah. to explain something that I can do in three to five minutes with like, okay, volunteer, come on up, like let me demo this. Okay, cool, got it, great. To do that in a blog post with like 3,000 words, it's just, it's unwieldy. All right, Thanks, buddy. Yeah, that's awesome. Course. Yeah, I'm psyched. Pleasure. I'm super psyched. Well, that, that was so fun talking with Tim. I mean, I could spend hours. I'm I'm signed up for the class. So, awesome. I, and I I know you have several others who are at, at Tim's level, right? Yeah. Can you give me a little taste of maybe sure, who's going to come sure. on? Sure. Sure. Uh, yeah. There's a, a, a boy. So we got again class in photography filmmaking, uh, design, businesses. Like, there's a lot of our community has been asking to learn more about business and productivity and entrepreneurship, which is really relevant to your, your audience. Um, Give one me some of, ideas. Sure, one of which is uh, Ramit Sethi. Do you know Ramit? He's a personal finance guru, absolutely uh, brilliant. He's also got a number one New York, or number one Amazon bestseller called I Will Teach You To Be Rich. Um, We've got uh, Lewis Howe. Yeah, Lu here. Lewis Howe, he wrote a book. Uh, Lewis is an amazing guy. Tim, you know Lewis. He, is a world record holder in a bunch of things. He plays team handball for USA, but he's an amazing author. He wrote a book on LinkedIn. Um, he's talking. What he's talking about? Oh yeah, selling a product online, how to package and create a product. And so he just that named online. one of the top uh, entrepreneurs under 30 years old by I think Forbes yeah. or Fortune. I should know that, but it's one of those two magazines yeah. named him. Th that's the kind of quality that we want. And then top top 10 um, wedding photographers in the world. If you want to learn photography, for example, is a and these are these are for people who are want to take their hobby to the next level, or people who are aspiring and want to become pro or make some sort of money on the side. And the super high end pros that that so those people one will help, help with the business side and, and explain not just how to make a great portrait shot, you know, at sunset right. when, where the lighting might be a little freaky, but right. also help help us out with the business side of things. Yeah, yeah. and so it's really a range, and, and and I think think you know creativity and and. Uh, Entrepreneur and sort of start putting those together, and it's it really covers a range. And one of the things that I'm proud about is like the name Creative Live. Like, hmm, is it too narrow? Like, well, creative. I mean, if you think you mentioned in this talk, Seth Godin. Seth Godin calls all his business folks artists in his new book, in Lynchpin, for example. You have Daniel Pink, the author who wrote the book A Whole New Mind. Is that right? 
Yeah, Hong and Mind, where mm -hmm. the, the sort of the rise of the right brain folks. You got Arthur's like Malcolm Gladwell talking about sort of creativity as the new sort of aspirational pinnacle in all sorts of things, not just in drawing and painting and, and art and photography, but in business. And so I, we feel like the zeitgeist is really good for making the world a more creative place. Can I watch these or uh, participate on an iPad or an Android tablet or uh, yep. only in... in absolutely, place? absolutely. And the downloads when you buy them, are, they look great on an iPad or, or a phone. Yeah, very cool. The full program. I could talk to you guys forever. I, I think <laughs> what you're doing is, you know, is fantastic. Uh, congrats on getting funded at that level. Now, what, what do they expect in return, by the way, when they uh, give you $7.5 million? What's pretty cool is that we took the money, you know, of, a few months ago, haven't spent a bit of it. Yeah. Chase keeps pushing me. Come on, we gotta spend more money. We gotta spend more money. We're trying, but the, the, the business and, and scale this out to other topic areas. You know, like uh, yes, yeah. yes, you know, do, yes. Do we have we golf have golf star to teach people on the golf course how to swing. Better. If you just think about education, you think about this model that anyone in the world can watch for free. There's no friction. You can get to an internet connection. You can watch, and if you like what you see, you pay for it. If not, we've still educated that person. And you think about the different educational platforms or the different educational um, bases that you can you know extrapolate that to and it's virtually endless but you're, we're excited we want the sexy stuff I'm I'm an artist by trade and, and by nature and uh, so you're not but, trying to com compete with say, uh, with the Khan's Academy for instance very or, different very he's different teaching math at, at right. the same kind of level that you're teaching creative yeah teaching. very very different I don't think anybody's really in our category at this point especially the live and social side it's very different yeah, it's very different. And, you know, the, the, the other folks that are in this space are working on K through 12s or... University and, or... Yeah, and, and I'm critical of those institutions in that, that a little bit. And I don't need to, you know, go into it here, but I think the idea of, of skill-based, lifelong, casual learning where people can get real skills, like, that's how I want to learn anything. Like what Tim was just talking about, I want to learn from Tim because I want to learn how to dice carrots without cutting my fingers off, for example, or whatever great skill you know he's going to teach us. Me too. I mean, I, I'm going to go <laughs> back out on the bay and shoot Fleet Week with my uh, cannon. I want to get better at that, right? Mm -hmm. Not Absolutely. to make a business, not to try to compete with you, because I can't compete with you, right? but to do what I'm doing Absolutely. better. Absolutely. Right? And we want to empower you to do that. Very cool. Where do we learn more about it? Uh, CreativeLive.com. Cool. And uh, there's live classes all the time. You'll be able to see the calendar out a couple months. and. We're adding classes all the time. And one of the things that, again, I'm really proud about is we've created a, a really big, strong community, um, having not really talked to anybody about it. Uh, and we get to listen to the community. The community tells us what they want. And then we do our best to find the best in the world, um, these, these world-class folks. And if Tim is a, is a sample of what artists and authors and, and you know, people that are in these trades think of the platform then that's the best you know if we've created something that they want to come share their deal on then then we've succeeded and it's only going to continue to grow i mean imagine his books are sort of coming to life in 3d you know yeah so. and thanks tim for coming on the show and talking a little bit about your yeah he signed your book huh yeah. it was unsigned that's all i got it done baby <laughs> <laughs> you think this is about money no it's about getting the signature in the book <laughs> thanks, thanks so a lot, much brother. for coming out and uh, appreciate it time. thank congrats you congrats on that yeah, we are. Yeah. I'll say one new time, fun gig. We are super thankful to have you yeah, on the crew. It's gonna man. be great. He's an amazing, it's been great. amazing it's CEO, been. and we've got a super amazing team um, in in Seattle and in the Bay here. So look for great things.